We tell them how the hell do we know? <laughs> you know, 50 years ago we were 18 years old and we had an attention span of about two minutes. <laughs> now we're 68, do they think it improved? <laughs> And with you gals, you know, I can look back in time and I can remember when most of you gals had that hourglass figure and, you know, some of the sand shifted a little here and there, but you're still just as beautiful. Guys, let's hear it for one more time. Some quick acknowledgments. Let's put our hands together for Bill Foster and for Dick Walker, who started the website that gave us the opportunity to meet each other. Thank you, Bill. Hi, Roy. Roy, it's Phil Foster and Judy who found most of you, almost all of you. Right, Dick's Phil? Saying it's Phil Foster and, and Judy. It's Judy Gordon. Found most of us. Yeah, right. Even if you <laughs> you know, a lot of work, as you can see tonight. Did everybody enjoy their meal? Okay. Because we tried to put a menu together that would suit everybody's appetite and please everyone. So, and the hotel has done a phenomenal job. Of None of you can actually understand the effort that's gone into this reunion. You have no idea how many gallons of beer and <laughs> gallons of wine we had to drink during the planning <laughs> And the food, and, but we made it through. We've been meeting now for probably a year, or over a year, and we've met at all the different houses uh, Carol and Gary, uh, we met at Bob and Louise Fowler's, we met at Ginger's, we met at uh, you know, oh, restaurants. Um, we've done many reunions. We did the Bill Adams house. Bill Adams comes with some of the planning, and he's got like a three hour drive to get there. But I can tell you, it's been a, it was a bonfire where he tried to burn down his shed. <laughs> but it's been a labor of love because we've gotten more benefit out of it than you can ever imagine. I'm going to ask him to stand up real quick as I call it. Part of Mike McCall. shared our meetings. They also did meeting minutes. Special ones. Louise and Bob Fowler. They did the memory book. Louise was the treasurer. They did the t-shirts. And I hope everybody loves their t-shirts. Yeah. We have Vernon Swab for immoral support throughout the whole thing. <laughs> as we went. Jamie was our food consultant and she made the best potato salad oh, yes. ever. Yes. Yes. Pat McDonald and along with Ginger and Karen did all the arrangements with the hotel for us. Got us our reduced rates. Carol Pestale and Gary Witzel. I just made names when we go through because I can't remember the elements half the time. They did the decorations, the name tags, and put all this together for us. My wife Sharon was assistant treasurer. She did some editing, some proofreading, as did Carol and Gary and a whole bunch of other people. So we made Gary Whitfield and Rachel who is Bob and Louise's daughter, who put about 25 or 30 hours into the program, just to coordinate it. And Louise and Sharon are now honorary members of our club. Yeah. And Gary, and Gary. And I'd like to say, we are the best club.
class. So Ratzville's effort. I know students here, Judy will tell you, we were the smartest class at Surrattsville. We were the only class that graduated in 1964. And the class of 65 will tell you they're smarter than we are, but if they were as smart as we were, they'd have graduated in 1964 too. So that's true. Um, we had a wonderful football team. Who that is? Karen. I, I, I had Karen in here. Karen with decorations. And 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 look at the centerpieces. You know we had a great football team, we had a great basketball team. If I remember correctly, our football team outweighed the Maryland University football team front line by five pounds per man. And, and when I saw Glenn Leach tonight, I accused him of leaving half of himself home. <laughs> we had nicknames, we had stuff, we had shoot, we had, and, and Rusty Gray and I talked this morning. I told him, I said, now half the class could be called Rusty. <laughs> Do you remember the cheer, up, Norman, up, 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 up Norman, up, 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 because when Norman Carmichael, who was class of 65, and we appreciate that, would do the jump ball, it was up, Norman, up, 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 Norman, up. Well, the week of the championship at Maryland University, Norman hurt his back, and he couldn't jump. And our one and only, Chuck Tudor, stepped in. But I gotta say, up, Chuck, up, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been traveling for about four years now in different parts of the country. I've been to Alaska and Hawaii, uh, but I got to travel a lot on the West Coast. And I, my wife and I, at one point, went to San Francisco and we had dinner with Bobby Kramer and Russ, her husband. and. Um, and I, I got another chance to have dinner with him. I had dinner at David Foster's house with his wife, Janice. And, but on the way back on one of those plane trips, I was sitting in the seat and I was listening to this conversation right behind me and there was this, this little girl and this apparent strange man that she didn't know, but he looked at her and he said, he said, little girl, he said, I, I see you're reading a, a Sunday school magazine, he said, you know, there is no God. He said, I'm an atheist. And he said, we're very intelligent people. And he said, we figured out a long time ago. He said, religion, it's just to, you know, make people guilty and give money to people they don't know. He said, and, and I can explain to you why there isn't any God. And the little girl said, you know, I'd be interested to hear that. She said, but first, she said, I've got a question for you. She said, I've asked a lot of people. Nobody can answer. She said, but you're a very smart man. And she said, it's this. She said, deer eat grass, and cows eat grass, and horses eat grass. She said, excuse the term, when a deer poops, it's a little tiny pellets, and when a cow poops, it's a big black pies, and when a horse poops, it's a kind of lump. She said, why is that? And he said, hell, I don't know. She said, so you think you're smart enough to talk about God, and you just admit it, you don't know. <laughs> Started, when we started our senior year, it wasn't 1964, it was 1963. And I'm sure everybody remembers what happened in November of 1963 that changed our whole destiny for years to come. And I know I remember where I was. I was on my way to get my driver's license because my parents wouldn't let me get my driver's license. I was 17 because I didn't didn't spend enough time on the books. And so at that point, you know, there's only been four presidents assassinated. And those were Lincoln and Garfield, McKinley and Kennedy. So we've been part of 
one of those histories. Not a great one, but it's something that that we will always remember. Um, since 1964, there have been five popes. There's been Pope Paul VI, there's been John Paul I, John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and now we've got the Francis. But in all of history, there's only been five popes that ever resigned. And we've seen one in our lifetime. The other ones happened between the 10th and 15th centuries, and I know maybe some of you were there for that. <laughs> our president in 1964 was Lyndon B. Johnson. And that's because he's just the Back then we had rotary phones, and then we got push button phones. And now we have little tiny cell phones that we just carry around with us. It's amazing what we've seen. We had jukeboxes at Children's Restaurant. Now we have our iPods that we walk around with and we go drive. We had milk in glass bottles with a paper stop. Do you realize during our time when we started growing up that all the passenger airplanes were propeller airplanes? We didn't have jets. There were only a few jets at the end of World War II, and they were very limited. We had black and white TV with a little tiny screen, and then it became a 13-inch, and I think it was 17-inch. And color TV was when you took the plastic thing that was blue at the top and green at the bottom and it stuck to your TV screen and that was color TV. Now we've got 91 inch flat screen TV. We got to see the end of the Cold War. We saw the Berlin Wall be torn down. We heard the phrase, one small step for man, one giant leap for man. Because we saw from jets to jumbo jets that we now ride on, we take, we don't even think about it, to John Glenn orbiting the Earth, and to Buzz Aldrin and meet Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Okay, I'm gonna run you real quick through a line. These are just, and I'm gonna do as quickly as I can. This will drive your memory. It's 1960 to 1969, our TV was, what's my line? Gunsmoke, General Hospital, Andy Griffith Show. The Twilight Zone, Perry Mason, Days of Our Lives, The Brady Bunch, Hee Haw, Bonanza, The Beverly Hillbillies, I Dream of Jeannie. Oh, God, I love that joke. Uh, <laughs> and Gone Will Travel, Gilligan's Island, Hawaii 5 Mission Impossible, Star Trek, McHale's Navy, Leave It to Beaver, The Virginian, Hogan's Heroes, My Three Sons, 77 Sunset Strip, Hollywood Squares, Dark Shadow. That Masterson, The Carol Burnett Show, Daniel Boone, Alfred Hitchcock, The Rifleman, Benny Hill, Bob Hope, Red Skeleton, As the World Turns, Gomer Pyle, um, Mr. Ed, Batman, Merv Griffith, The Honeymooners, Ironside, Man from Uncle, Maverick, Route 66, Bewitched, Dr. Kildare, Green Acres, Guiding Light, Dragnet, The Real McCoys, Petticoat Junction, the Monkeys, The Uncomfortable, Barnes Well, The Pink Panther, Adam 12, Father Knows Best, Patty Duke. My favorite Martian, Lucille Ball, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, Steve Allen, Dick Van Dyke, Rawhide, The Tonight Show, Story of Johnny Carson, The Jetsons, Mayberry RFD, Mayberry RFD, The Monsters, Peter Gunn, Wagon Train, Spider Man, Flipper, that girl with Marlo Thomas and the mining pythons flying his Those are all memories. Back when we grew up, we didn't have bicycle helmets. We could go out at dawn in the morning and come home at dusk, and our parents never worried where the hell we were. We had wholesome things. We played sandlot football and sandlot baseball and softball. We didn't have organized teams like we do today where the parents count for every minute and play dates and all that. We were allowed to dream and to be creative. And that's what made us what we are. And we're absolutely at the top because we had that opportunity. 
<coughs> for the generation that we had. Just a few more quick memories. We're the generation with the scar on the top of our arm because we had the polio vaccine. We're the generation that climbed under our desks and put our hands over our head because the big man might drop it. We grew up without video games, without transformers, without computers, and I had to laugh. I said, Bobby, I said, were you a computer science major? No, they didn't have computer science when she started college. If you remember, our children had the Commodore 64, which is probably the first computer that we ever had. Now we have our iPods and we have our workbooks and we're a generation that has changed so much and we're watching our kids go through that golden phase. We're the matriarchs and the patriarchs today. It's us on the front line. And when, now that we're retired, maybe it's time for us to step down, but it's actually time for us to step up. And we're, we've shown that we can do that. And in our 50 years since we walked out of Strathville High School, we've been the creative generation. And the class of 64 is exactly that. A lot of class. So let's give us this. Everybody give us a Just a few more things. Um, everybody knows that I'm working in West Virginia. How many people are still working? How many? Raise your hand. Somebody reach over and smack the hell out of Yeah, but they work for themselves. I've got 32 days left. Not that I'm counting. I told somebody it was 20,462 seconds from the top of And uh, but I'm up in West Virginia, and I'm in this little convenience store. It's right next to Clint's Taxidermy and Bridal Shop. And, um, and this guy comes running into this convenience store, and he yells, Bubba! Bubba, you said somebody just stole your pickup truck! Bubba says, did you see who it was? He said, no. He said, but I got the tag number. <laughs> Then there was a one of our classmates, and I won't tell you who it is, but he, he went to the doctor and he got a physical. And he, a couple days later, the doctor saw him walking down the street with this, I mean, beautiful, gorgeous young woman, and he. So he saw him the next day, and he said, "I he said, you're really doing great, aren't you?" He said, "Yeah, doc." He said, "I'm just doing what you told me." He said, "You told me." He said, "Get a hot mama and be cheerful." And the doctor said, "No, I didn't." I said, you got a heart murmur, be careful. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, we had a classmate who said yesterday, he said, I've had two bypass surgeries, I've had hip replacement, I've got new knees, I brought prostate cancer and diabetes, he said, I'm half blind, I can't hear anything quieter than a jet engine. He said, I take about 40 different medications that make me dizzy and winded and subject to blackouts. He said, I've bounced with dementia. I got poor circulation. I can hardly feel my hands and feet. He said, I can't remember who I met at the time. He said, but thank God, I've still got my driver's license. <laughs> I'll finish with this, and again, I want to remind you, to see the memorial plaque, and uh, we're going to do something, I'm going to take five minutes. We did this on our cruise, so the ones that were there will know what I'm about to do. But I'm going to ask everybody, if you'll stand up, everybody, stand up. Okay, I'm going to ask you to push your chair in so you can get it as close to the table because I want to make room. You got that? Step out to the center. 
those so that we have as much room. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the opportunity of a lifetime. You'll never have it again. And I guarantee it because we know it from our last reunion. I'm going to ask you to go around. I'm giving you five minutes. When I ring the bell, I want you to go back and get in your seat so we can finish out for this evening before we start our dancing. But I'm going to ask you, I want you to go through in the next five minutes, and I want you to hug every person that you can in five minutes. And I want to tell you guys, it's okay. It's okay to hug another guy. Because if you're just coming out of the closet after six or eight years, it's too damn late. But I want you to hug Run, every person you can. Now, go. John Seppard, I remember from Adam, you must have stayed out of trouble. You were a handsome young guy there, bro. I used to hate guys like you that were better looking than I was. That's right. You've done a great job we'll seeing all the, the artwork. Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on, Dave. <laughs> oh, watch that course size. I know you're Good looking for it. You just want to be with the high team. We'll see you on the other side now. <laughs> That's up, not too soon. There you go. Don't hug. <laughs> oh, you know, I still hug. Whatever. Yes, it is. 